everybody welcome back uh, to the second session of today's lectures um, the next lecture is timo pukaland welcome are you ready to share your presentation yes i'm ready yeah perfect okay i can start okay so thank you for inviting me to this seminar and i will talk about the externalities of timber production in general and then, then also a bit how much and what they are in even aged and continuous cover forest management. But first a definition, what is the total benefit of forestry? It's also called, can be called social benefit of forestry. In my, my vocabulary, the social benefit of forestry is equal to the total benefit of forestry. So it is uh, equal to the timber benefit plus positive ex externalities of timber production minus negative externalities of timber production. So if you are produce, uh, producing timber, you are also mm, creating some externalities, which can be positive or negative. Yes, okay. So we were here. The definition of the total benefit of forestry it's equal to especially in Finland Sweden is equal to timber benefit plus positive externality this minus negative externalities so when you are producing timber you are causing some side effects they are called externalities uh, and uh, Mm, we are talking about positive externalities and they are those for which more is better. For example, multiple uses, berry picking, wild, wild mushrooms, maintenance of habitat, biodiversity, reg regulative effects like uh, erosion control, carbon sequestration, water management, these kind of things. And then there are also negative externalities for which less is better. For example, nutrient leakage to water system or dead organic matter leakage from, <coughs> from peatland forest to water system. And uh, the reality in most cases is that uh, when you are producing timber with the current methods, you usually are decreasing the positive externalities of forestry and increasing the negative ex externality, externalities of forestry. That is the situation or truth in most cases. And in F Finland especially, and the same in Sweden, the forestry is very much concentrating on timber production. But, but uh, if you are looking at the value of different functions of forests, uh, the mm, uh, value of timber production is not necessarily the highest. Here is one estimate from Kappen et al. They belong to Boston Consulting Group, these people. And they have published a re report called the staggering value of forests. And they, they have estimated that uh, the regulative effects of forests explain 65 to 90 percent of the total value of the forests of the world. These things, carbon sequestration, drinking water, yield, erosion control, we could add the wind shelter, noise shelter, dust, dust uh, interception and these kind of things. And economic benefits explain only 5 to 20 percent of the total value of the world's forest. And usually when we, we are talking about the benefits of uh, forests, there are three categories in most cases, economic, social uh, and ecological. But I, I am using nowadays this kind of uh, division, four groups in which there are no social benefit group at all. <clears throat> I usually divide the benefits, benefits into uh, economic, benefits or timber benefits, multiple use benefits, biodiversity benefits and reg regulative benefits, four categories instead of trees. 
and why social benefit is not here as one category. It's uh, it, it is because timber benefit, for example, is very clearly also a social benefit. There is no separate timber benefit and uh, and social benefit, and we can also integrate um, this so that all benefits are social benefits. This is clearer to me. Okay, and what what uh, how, how should forest policy be to maximize the um, benefit of forests to people, current people and future generations? The overall idea is that forest policy should support or subsidize forestry that creates positive externalities. And it should tax or penalize forestry activities that generate negative externalities. But that is, that, that is not the case in Finland, very clearly. Negative externalities, for example, decreasing nature values, have not been penalized or taxed. Uh, for example, only was one example. And as a consequence, timber has been produced with the detriment of uh, other forest functions. And we have, we can say or think that we, as a consequence, we have carbon depth, multiple use depth, biodiversity depth, and water quality depth because of too much concentration on timber production. Okay, and, uh, if, and if you think about Finnish forest policy a bit more closely, timber production first. Uh, mm, some practices are subsidized by the state, and these uh, are all these practices which are subsidized, they belong to even age management. And, uh, and uh, uneven age management or continuous cover management is not currently subsidized. We can say, if we exaggerate a bit, that bad practices are subsidized and good practices are not subsidized. Biodiversity maintenance, there are some uh, uh, resources or funds, uh, for example, METSO or HELMI, which can be used to subsidize um, the protection of key habitats. But what is more important is that biodiversity loss is not penalized. You can, you, you can decrease um, uh, biodiversity as much as you like in most cases without any consequences. And the same for amenities. There are no subsidized, subsidizes for improved recreation or scenic values. And if you are decreasing recreational values, you, you do not need to pay. And carbon sequestration is not subsidized by state. And in fact, the state makes it the uh, difficult for uh, forest landowner to benefit from carbon, carbon sequestration. And the reason is that all, all the increments in the carbon stocks of forests, they are included in the national carbon budget of Finland. Even if the uh, forest landowner uh, increases the carbon stock, the benefit, uh, let us say, is taken by the uh, state. If a landowner decides to increase the carbon, carbon stocks of forests, it's very difficult for him or her to benefit, benefit from this increase. And what, how valuable are another estimate, the different benefits that the forests produce? Here is a, a statistic about the mean annual net income of forestry timber production in different par parts of Finland and Finland average. It's a bit more than 100 euros per hectare per year. In Lapland, it is 35 euros per hectare per year. And North Ostrobotnia, northern part of Finland, about 60, 65 euros per hectare per year. This is how much timber production um, produces net income on average. And we can compare this um, with the value of carbon, carbon sequestration. 
uh, on average in southern Finland, one hectare of forest sequestrates about three tons of carbon per hectare per year. And in central Finland, it is two, and in north Finland, it is one. And they are carbon, and they can be converted into carbon dioxide by multiplying by 3.67. And we know that the value of one ton of carbon dioxide is about 30, uh, 67 euros per ton at the moment in international carbon trade. Uh, and <coughs> uh, using this price and the conversion factor 3.67, we can calculate that the value of carbon sequestration it would be in southern Finland around 730 euros per hectare per year. Uh, uh, 490 euros per hectare per year in central Finland and in Lapland 245 euros per hectare per year. And this can be compared with the mean annual net income of timber production, which is around 50 euros per hectare per year in northern Finland. Carbon, the value of carbon sequestration is, is about five times more than the value of timber production or the net income of timber production. We can say that carbon sequestration is already much more important, valuable than timber production in Finnish forests. And then a few uh, slides about the uh, uh, wa water effects. Forestry increases nutrient leakage to water system. That is the reality. And in Finland, we have millions of hectares of drained peatlands. And, uh, and th there is a continuous leakage of nitrogen and phosphorus, uh, phosphorus from these forests to, uh, to water system. And it's not temporary, but it is continuous. It will never end or stop. And if you are fertilizing, mineral soil forests with nitrogen, it will create uh, additional nutrient load to water system, temporary, this is temporary. Uh, or if you uh, fertilize peatland forests using mainly phosphorus and kalium, there will be phosphorus leakage. And if you cut forest thin and especially clear fell, it will also increase the nutrient load to water system. And ditch maintenance, if you ex excavate the ditches, make them better, you will get a temporary increased load of <coughs> uh, uh, phosphorus and, and nitrogen. Uh, and in addition to this nutrient load, there is a constant uh, leakage of uh, organic matter, especially from peatland forests to water system. You may have seen this kind of diagram, which is about the planetary boundaries created by Stockholm Resilience Center. And there are nine or something uh, dimensions or aspects. And for all, there is a so-called safe operating space. Uh, and uh, uh, if the, the um, safe operating space uh, is passed, for all these things, that then we can say that there is very little hope left for, for human beings. But if we look at uh, this biogeochemical flow, phosphorus and nutrients, you can see that the uh, mm, safe limit of safe operating space has been passed a long time ago. There is already too much. Uh, phosphorus uh, and uh, nitrogen in the water system. We should not increase the uh, load more. But what forestry is doing is, is creating a uh, nutrient load. I said earlier that uh, if you have trained a peatland forest, uh, 30 years ago or 40 years ago, it will uh, continue creating nutrient uh, leakage to water system. 
uh, and uh, the, the more efficient is the draining, uh, the higher is the nutrient load. This is, th th this is a diagram which describes the effect of uh, the water table depth on the annual uh, nutrient leakage uh, per he hectare per year. And for example, if uh, the depth of the water table is 0 0.5 meters, which is quite typical, every hectare will uh, cause every year a, a nutrient, uh, nitrogen load of one kilogram. kilogram. And we have 5 million hectares of drained peatlands, which means that there will be every year 5 million um, uh, kilograms of nutri uh, nitrogen load to water systems. Uh, and if you cut forest, you will have a temporary increased lo uh, 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 nutrient load. If you thin, remove, for example, on for 50 cubic meters per hectare, these are very small, these loads, and they last only for uh, around five years. But if you clear well, remove 300 cubic meters per hectare, the loads are much higher, could be 10. 10 kilograms per <coughs> hectare for, for, let us say, five years. And then something about the uh, forestry, the effect of forest ma management on nature capital. Uh, what has happened in Finland is that the share of old forests ha has decreased continuously for 100 years, especially in northern Finland, uh, which means that the habitats of those species which uh, are dependent of old growth type of forest is decreasing continuously. There are, let us say, at least 700 forest dwelling species which are threatened due to forest management activities, and as much as 70 five, six percent of environment types are threatened in Finland. They are very high figures. And the uh, <coughs> current uh, forest management in Finland, it represents so-called weak sustain sustainability. There is strong sust sustainability and weak sustainability. And in weak sustainability, it is allowed to increase uh, economic and human capital at the cost of nature capital. And if that's, this happens or is allowed, then it is a question about weak, weak sustainability. And a special type of weak sustainability, so-called Mickey Mouse sustainability, you can you, you can guess what is the reason for this name. If you increase uh, e uh, or emphasize economic functions at the cost of ecological and multiple use functions, then it is so-called Mickey Mouse sustainability. Then is strong sustainability, which is now required more and more. And the idea of strong sustainability is that the loss of nature capital can, can not be compensated for by increased economic or human capital. All uh, aspects or dimensions or functions of forests should be separately sustainable. You cannot increase economic capital or human capital by decreasing ecological or nature capital. And usually it is uh, seen that the nature capital is the most important. So if you need to sacrifice something, you should sacrifice something else, but not nature capital. Because uh, uh, maintaining biodiversity and uh, nature capital is uh, the best way to guarantee the long-term sustainability of all, all other forest functions, and therefore it is the most important. Here's an example of a current 
Finnish forest management last summer in Ostrobotnia in northern Finland, where the yield of a plantation forest is about two cubic meters per hectare per year. Uh, and this kind of forest management where, where, where you prepare the site, then plant the spruces and tend the young stand for a few times is not, is not profitable. You are not getting back the investment with, with, a, with, with a, um, a rent or interest of 2% of more. It's not profitable and in addition it uh, creates uh, negative externalities. This type of forest, I think it has been a spruce forest with a very thick moss layer. Mm. And as a consequence of this treatment, clear felling and site preparation, practically all carbon of the forest floor will be released to the atmosphere. And the amount of carbon in this type of forest, uh, in the, this moss layer can be as high uh, as the carbon of the uh, tree biomass. Uh, and the carbon of removed timber is released on the average in five years. So most carbon of this forest will be released to the atmosphere as a consequence of this treatment. And nature values may be not very high and multiple uses also, also low. And there is evidence that the, the soil carbon um, stock um, or uh, soil organic matter decomposes faster in a uh, clear felt area compared to a covered forest. This is a study by Lena Finner and her group. He has placed pine stick in different positions uh, under a tree cover uh, and in clear felt area and measured the, de the, the decomposition of these sticks. And the result was that the decomposition of similar pine sticks was three times faster in clearfield area compared to, to a, a forest, forest. Which, which means that when we uh, remove the tree cover, the uh, carbon stocks of uh, forest soils will be um, uh, uh, released to the atmosphere with an accelerated rate. Temperature increases and increased temperature increases the decomposition processes. Another photograph uh, from, from North <coughs> Ostrobotnia. This is a typical even aged ma management, the clear felling site preparation and planting spruce. These are about 10 years old spruces. And you can see that there is practically no biomass, no timber, and the same will continue for 20 more, more years. We can let us say we can see that uh, there is no, no notable timber production in 30 years, no notable carbon sequestration in 30 years. And in fact, this type of forest is a carbon source because of, uh, of the decomposition of uh, soil organic uh, material, uh, uh, harvest residues, and so on. This is releasing, this releasing carbon to the atmosphere. Uh, 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 and uh, <coughs> many species are dependent on dead wood, especially large stems of dead wood, which means that the good forest should uh, provide a continuous supply of dead wood as well. Mm -hmm. But if you treat the forest like this, there will be a 300 years interruption in, in the production of new dead wood. Uh, and continuous cover for forestry has been proposed as one, one means to uh, decrease the negative ex externalities of intensive plantation forestry. Uh, and uh, but, uh, in my mm, termi terminology, the definition of continuous cover forestry is that it's any man management 
which uh, maintains the tree cover. Uneven aged forest, forestry is also continuous cover forestry, but it is not a synonym of it, but it is just one type of continu continuous cover forestry. And be because of this definition, we can say that all cutting types except clear felling are possible in continuous cover forestry. And there is no transformation, transformation period. If you have a tree cover already, you can immediately, when you stop clear felling the forest, you, you are already in a con continuous cover forest management immediately. No transformation periods are needed. And I'm using this type of management in my forests. I have a few photographs, they are all from my own, own stands, forests. This is the latest, la latest uh, cutting harvest last autumn. Uh, and uh, mainly uh, we are removing large trees in continuous cover forestry, but it is not uh, necessarily always so. This is one harvested tree. All these five solocks are from the same pine. And the volume of this pine is about two, two cubic meters. And the income from this one pine is about the same what I would get um, by selling 70 bulkwood sized stems. A few stems uh, give um, quite much income. You don't need to remove very many stems. And if you think of, uh, if we think of harvesting costs, um, uh, the vol volume of this stem is about two cubic meters. And if you um, harvest bulk wood sized trees, uh, 30, 14 centimeter diameter, the volume of one stem is about 1.0.1 cubic meters. You need to harvest 20 bulk wood sized stems to get the same removal, which you get from one large stem. And of course, harvesting one stem like this is much cheaper than harvesting 20 bulk wood side stems which means that the harvesting cost of, of continuous cover forestry is in many cases less than in even age management. Of course, clear filling is cheap, but in even age management, you also do thinnings, which are quite expensive. Another for uh, stand, in, in fact, my first CCF cut, this has been tinned from above two years earlier, and it looks like this. It is even sized, but it is continuous cover forest management because there will be no clear filling. <laughs> after, soon after thinning, it looked like this. And last summer, it look, looked like this. You can see that there is already plenty of regeneration. It starts to regenerate naturally. No planting, no seeding is needed. And there are also other things, not only trees, but some other nice things in the forest. Another stand from the same forest, and this is older. It has been treated with thinning from above, uh, and the thinning was stronger because the aim is to, is to increase natural regeneration. And that there is regeneration of many species. Another um, stand, this is planted birch, and it has been treated with thinning from below. You can see that it is not, the selection cutting is not, not the only type of cutting which you can do in continuous cover forestry. In the, this cutting, the smallest birches uh, were removed because they were thin with very small crowns, weak, weak, individuals. But next cutting will be thinning from above and gradually this will uh, develop this stand towards a multi-layered mixed stand of spruce and birch. 
another uh, uh, cutting uh, a stand which uh, was earlier managed according to even aged forest principles. The previous cutting was thinning from below, but I conducted uh, a thinning from above. A normal cutting in this forest would be careful, but I did like this. And these are mm, timber uh, from, from the previous stands, which we saw recently. And you can see that the share of solox is high and the share of pulp wood is low. And because of this, the average price per sold cubic, cubic meter is high. Even if the price might be less than in clear felling, but the share, because of the high share of solox, the price per cubic meter is higher than in clear felling. I will get more euros per cubic meter than I would get in clear fed because there is so much solo. Another forest, mm, again, very good income because the sold timber was valuable, transmission line poles and solos mainly. And the forest, after quite a heavy cutting, it looks like this, not bad if we think of recreation, for example. And this is also productive, economically productive. But you need to leave retention trees also in uh, continuous cover uh, forestry. These uh, trees with the blue band, blue tape, they, they, I have marked them, they, they will be left to grow forever and finally die and become large dead wood. The latest uh, harvest block <clears throat> uh, 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 in which again plenty of timber was removed. But if you look the forest after the cutting, you can see that there are there is dead wood left. There are several species of broad leaves, aspen, birch, uh, rowan, and so on. Uh, and there are thickets, uh, dense places of spruce and also large living trees have been left. Th this is a good habitat still after uh, for many species. But at the same time, forest management is profitable. Another forest uh, in even aged pine forest in which there is natural um, advanced regeneration of spruce. A high thinning was conducted, 170 cubic meters was removed per hectare and 85% of the removal was solo, which means that the price per cubic meter was good again. Oh, okay, and I have been um, developing methods to um, evaluate the responsibility of uh, forest management some kind of objective um, computational methods which can be used to assess how responsible the forest management is. And I have one article called Assessing the Externalities of Timber Production, published in Forest Policy and Economics. Uh, and in this uh, article, I describe a method and an index or a score which uh, 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 describes the level of externalities uh, uh, of a commercial forest. Uh, and this score ha has uh, three main criteria, biodiversity, climate change mitigation and multiple uses. Water, <coughs> water effects are not yet here. And each criterion is uh, described with uh, three or four indicators. And all these indicators can be calculated uh, for any forest stand, for the current forest or future stage. There are models or methods to calculate these indicator variables. Biodiversity, for example, is uh, described uh, through the volume of large trees 
uh, volume of dead wood, volume of protective species, and species, and the three species diversity. And the, these uh, indicators, they can be calculated for current forests. And the score, what you get, it uh, reflects the uh, past management, how good it is in terms of defects, or it has been in terms of these externalities. And it, they can also be calculated for management plans, which uh, in which case the score reflects the um, responsibility of the inten intended future management. Uh, and a few words about uh, some of the indicators. <clears throat> Large tree, it is one of the um, lacking elements of current Finnish forests. And what is a large tree? In this uh, calculation system, the, there is a limit for, for DBH limit for large trees. Uh, and the limit is different for different latitudes, temperature sums, and also for different fertility levels. And if, in fact, uh, the large tree, when it is defined in this way, it uh, is more or less equal to an old tree. <coughs> all three because the diameter limit is larger for southern Finland and larger for more fertile sites. Uh, <clears throat> I have taken a sample, 75,000 random sample of Finnish forest stands, and then I have calculated this indicator variables for all stands, and fr from this, uh, values I have calculated models for 1% quantile and 99% quantile of the indicator variable, variables. And they described the variation of the indicator variables in current Finnish forests. Here is an example. Soil carbon stock on mesic site. The lower line is the 1% quantile, which means that the one in one percent of the stand, the carbon stock is lower than this line. And the upper line, green line, is the 99 percent quantile, which means that uh, one only one percent of stands has a higher carbon stock than this line. And, and the red dotted line is the average carbon stock of Finnish forests. And all this depends on the temperature sum and, uh, and fer fertility. And using these models, it, uh, it is possible to calculate the 1% quantile and 95% quantile for, uh, for any, any stand. And these quantiles are used to calculate the points, indicator points, so, so that if the amount of the variable, indicator variable is equal, equal or, or less than 1% quantile, you will get zero points. And if the amount of the indicator variable is the same or better than the 99% quantile, you will get 100 points from this indicator variable. This is the idea. And here are, here are some mm, uh, models. Th these are the indicators of biodiversity. Shannon index describing species diversity broadleaf volume, large tree volume, deadwood volume. Uh, and the difference between the upper and lower um, green line is the range of this variable in current Finnish forests. And the lower level it, it, for most of these variables is, is zero or close to zero. And the red line is, uh, let us say, typical value or average. And if you, if you look at, for example, the reference level or typical level of large uh, volume of large trees in, in current Finnish forests, it is extremely low, the red line, very close to zero. And in this sample of uh, 75,000 stands stand of Finnish forest, there were no large trees at all in 94% of the stats. And if we think of a species which is dependent on large trees, 
we can conclude that 95% uh, of the stands are not suitable habitats for this kind of species. Okay, and this indicator uh, variables are calculated for all stands first and then they are converted into points based on this 1% quantile and 99% quantile. And then after that, the total um, uh, um, indicator, average area weighted indicate, indicator points are calculated for the whole forest. And then after that, this kind of formula, so-called cop plus utility function is uh, used to calculate the total, total externality uh, score for the whole forest. And this sign here, capital pi, P pi, is a multiplic multiplication sign, which means that the points from different indicators are multiplied with each other, which means that if any of the uh, points is zero, the whole score will be zero, which corresponds to the, this non-compensation approach. Lack of any any indicator cannot be compensated for by a high level of another indicator. If there is no dead wood in the whole forest, the score will be zero. Here is a calculation of the externality score for a southern boreal forest of 500 hectares in five different management scenarios or schedules. The black uh, dashed line is the reference level calculated for this forest. It's around 3.5. Uh, and the initial forest, this is really better than the average. But if you <coughs> uh, manage it using rotation forest management <coughs> without uh, retention trees, retention trees and maximize net present value as the only management objective, you will get this continuous blue line <coughs> developed. It will be, it will decrease more or less to the reference level and then be around the reference level. But if you are removing re a good amount of retention trees in all clear felling or regeneration areas, you will get a much, much better uh, externality score. <clears throat> and in, if instead you are using continuous cover management, maximizing only net present value, but using continuous cover management, you will get this red, red continuous line. It's maybe 35% better than the same in even its management. And if you are uh, leaving retention trees in continuous cover management, you will get the dashed red line. And if you do not cut at all, you will get the uh, green dotted line, w which would be the externality score in, in a non-managed forest. And the, if, uh, mm, you can think that the difference between this green line uh, and, for example, blue line is the cost of timber management in terms of externalities. There will be a 50% of loss in externalities if you are managing the forest uh, in a typical current way compared to a natural non-managed forest. You are losing 50% in externalities. <clears throat> and we saw that continuous cover forestry is a means to improve, improve externalities or, uh, or de uh, decrease the loss of externalities. But, and this uh, improvement can be achieved without any decrease in profitability. Here on the left-hand side, uh, are the net present values for the four, four uh, management scenarios, RFM, rotation forest management, 
with and without retention trees, continuous cover management with and without retention trees. And you can see that continuous cover management gives a higher net present value than rotation forest management. There is another forest from the northern part of Finland where, where the, the man, management systems are practically equal, but this depends on the, on the initial mm, structure of the forest. But we can say that uh, mm, mm, switching to continuous cover forestry does not decrease profitability and in many cases it improves profitability. That is all from me. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot for a very interesting lecture. Um, quite a few questions again, of course. Um, let's see. The first one uh, was a question. Uh, has, has, it, has there also been estimated how much uh, carbon dioxide that's been and will be emitted from all these drained wetlands? And I think one of your colleagues already in the chat answered that it's about 7 million tons a year, but, uh, but maybe you want to uh, say something about this too. Yeah, I cannot say uh, exact figures, but if you let the peat grow, it will sequestrate 0 0.25 tons of carbon every year. It will be an eternal carbon sink. But if you drain the peatland, uh, the aerobic peat layer is decomposing, and this will releasing carbon to the atmosphere. And this decomposition will continue as long as there is peat left, decades or even centuries. It will be a very, very long term carbon source. And the growth of the trees cannot comp compensate it because you can only increase the um, carbon stock of trees for let us say 100 years and then there is a certain level uh, and the <coughs> carbon stock of trees is no longer increasing but the peat it will continue decomposing which means that if you uh, that um, in terms of uh, climate effects um, drainage of peatland was not not a very mm, wise thing to do, but of course it is already many decades ago and we didn't think these things 50, 60 years ago so much. Yeah. It's easy to blame afterwards. Yeah, exactly. Um, there's a question about um, forest management also. Uh, what do you suggest to do if the forest contains more or less only large spruce and no re regeneration below, uh, would you do a, like a patch cutting or a small clear cut or what would you do? Yeah, that is one option, patch cutting. O or you can thin it heavily, but you cannot thin it Im immediately to allow density because there is a high risk of, of wind damage. Uh, you can create gaps Caps, extraction roads already are caps, some kind of caps, but you need to do it very carefully to avoid wind damage. Uh, what might be good is to mm, do a few, few thinnings at a few year intervals so that the, the stand gradually develops mm, resistant against wind, wind and then Finally, it will start getting natural regeneration. But these old spruce stands without any species mixture, they are the most problematic cases. They are very shaded and very difficult to get natural regeneration. Thank you. Um, the next one is a statement slash question. Uh, it says, no, uh, no, you cannot compare carbon trade prices with wood uh, production returns. This is because the carbon sequestration in forestry is not permanent. Trees may and probably will become har harvested sooner or later. Instead, a carbon rent can be compared with wood production returns. 
However, the magnitude of uh, rent is very far from the trade prices. I don't know if you want to comment that. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that is a, um, that, that, that if you are buying carbon sequestration from a landowner, you don't, usually you don't pay so much, you are paying much less and you need to overcompensate it because there is leakage if carbon is sequestrated in in in, um, in um, a certain forest most probably cuttings are increased in another forest but it just uh, it, uh, purpose was just to give an idea how, how valuable these things are uh, are but uh, yeah. it is true that the forest landowner cannot get so much or practically nothing at all yeah but 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 the climate will benefit from the carbon sequestration of forests and if, if you are not managing the forest it will be a carbon sink sink let us say for 200 years on uh, typically if you start from a typical finnish forest the biomass will increase for 100 years and after that uh, the dead organic matter carbon pool will continue increasing uh, for another 100 years okay thank you uh, when you talk about retention trees in your uh, model uh, how many retention trees or how, how big percentage or, or cubic meter level would you recommend per hectare uh, it should be much higher than the uh, limits in this uh, um, certification systems, FSC and so on. It should be mu much higher, let us see, let us say 10% of 5 to 10% of trees and, then, uh, 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 and the diameter limit should be clearly higher than the 10 centimeters. It, you, you should preferably uh, leave the biggest trees or leave all tree sizes, including the largest trees. Thank you. It, 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 it's the, the current um, levels are clearly uh, insufficient if you think of a continuous supply of new large dead, dead wood. Yeah, thanks. Uh, there is another question. Uh, could you please translate the term externality into Finnish forest terminology? Ulkoismaikutus. Somebody wants to know what? Ulkoismaikutus. Finnish, in Finnish. Okay. Ulkois, side effect, another term. Side yeah. effect, ulkoismaikutus. Yeah. Then it's another question about the carbon sequestration. Um, it says like this, the value of carbon sequestration compared to timber is interesting, but are there risk of uh, solely focusing on CO2 values uh, to direct forestry practices? This is uh, being promoted by some at the EU level. Uh, what is the best way to approach uh, internalizing <laughs> externities in a holistic way? Like, Covering the four areas of values you you um, uh, uh, you told talked about in your presentation. Uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, many of these forest functions they are not uh, all the time competing with each other. For example, the best easiest way to increase the volume growth of Finnish forests is to increase the biomass. The biomass of uh, Finnish forests has increased for 100 years and at the same time the growth has increased all, all the time. And the main reason for the increased volume increment is the increased biomass. And you can continue, if you increase the carbon stock, you will get more vo volume increment simultaneously and you will get better habitats. So, uh, and as we, we saw, if you change the practices a bit, less clear filling, more thinning from above, you are not losing in profitability either. So that there is surprisingly little trade-off 
you, you can you can improve um, several forest functions simultaneously if you are doing the right things yeah but is it uh, a follow-up question isn't it like this that at least in sweden we know that uh, the timber volumes were high especially in in uh, the boreal region of sweden before the timber front in the 1800s in the beginning of the 1900s and then it was over exploit as so the industry logged too hard and then the mm. volumes were quite it was not low but it was much lower than today and then it has increased from that time but is it the same kind of historical pattern because today a uh, lot of the timber volume is in quite dense like plantation like stands or a production stands but the volume historically were in big and very valuable trees in the natural forest so i think with the with your method the, it will be maybe increase in volume but the the structures will be much more nature like in the future i mean now it's now it's in very dense and dark stands with the the volume which is not so valuable in other fields like it's not that so valuable for for biodiversity and not so valuable for recreation but if you have a different kind of stance but still a high volume uh, that's a different story right yeah that is true that uh, yeah the stand structures will be quite different different and it's uh, this kind of uh, multi-layer multi-species stand is much better for biodiversity for example and another aspect is uh, the quality of the zone wood in plantation forestry the trees grow very rapidly at young age which means that the annual rings are thick and the wood density is low and the strength of the zone wood is also low and it has been calculated by increasing the width of the annual uh, ring by one millimeter the uh, mm, quality grade of the zone wood will go down mm, uh, by three categories and the value of the soil wood automatically increases so you are producing more valuable wood especially soil wood in continuous cover forestry because individual trees uh, grow slowly at young age but at the stand, stand level the volume production can be the same as in even aged forestry okay Thanks a lot for a great presentation and for this question time. I think we will have a short, short break and then the next uh, uh, presentation will be.